Now, when she attacked no campaigners today, Linda Burney mentioned one politician in particular. That was a One Nation founder and leader, Pauline Hanson, who joins me now. Thanks for joining us again, Pauline. Let's start with that speech. Were Thanks. you satisfied with Linda Burney's attempts to sort of describe the, where the voice would focus, that it would focus on education, employment and those sorts of things rather than go off trying to tell us how to run the country? No, I wasn't impressed with her speech at all because she outlined the problems and issues that are happening in the country. Education, you know, um, work for the doll, um, the housing issue. She's outlined everything. She's outlined what the problems are. So why do you need a voice if she knows what the problems are? Why don't you look at why it hasn't worked? Why hasn't closing the gap worked? Why hasn't, you know, given a sorry for, um, for the stolen generation? What about the native title claims that went with Marbo and native title um, that's handed over to Aboriginals? Why hasn't it worked? Because I tell you why, they know what the problems are, but they have had the wrong people in the wrong positions to actually um, bring accountability. There is so much corruption, waste of money, misappropriation that's going on in these Aboriginal industries, gravy train that I'll keep saying for time and time again, $30 billion a year. If yep. that hasn't been addressed, there's your problem there. Isn't that exactly the point of The Voice, though? If you want to fix these problems and get more bang for your buck, you need to have proper representation of Indigenous people giving governments the right uh, ideas. Chris, that is a stupid attitude to have to well, say that never you need a voice when well, you when never you got, tried when it. you got the voice that we have had we've had ADSIC and it was a failed organisation so we've had it there. Yeah, we know Look they the spent money, money which Where is a big Where's the money mistake. going? And I'm actually going to try and I'm trying to expose that the, the corruption that's going on in this industry and the whole fact is they know what the problem is. You, you think that having some more people advising Parliament and why enshrining the Constitution? The Constitution's not it. My concern is, once it's enshrined in the Constitution, this Parliament can actually put down whatever legislation they want to. They can give them whatever powers they want to and then we're stuck with that. And the whole fact is, you look at the money trail. Why have you got these people? Where's Linda Burney or Noel Pearson or um, Marcia Langdon? Where are they disadvantaged? They're not, because they got themselves up out of the quagmire and actually you know, improved yeah, their lives all right. well, and are hold positions now. Well, not, so, every, not no, Chris, everybody does. I disagree yeah, all right. with you, what I you're know, saying. I know you do. We, 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 we both know we disagree with each other. But my point is, of course, not everybody's as successful as Marcia Langdon or Noel Pearson. We, are, we know how disadvantaged Indigenous people are in this country. We're all committed, no matter what we think about The Voice, to closing that gap. What I do want to show you now is where Linda Burney attacked you in, uh, in that speech today and get your reaction. Here's Linda Burney at the Press Club today. Last month, Pauline Hanson went on radio and said that she had met a true black. To think that this is unimaginably... Um, insulting and de deserving of anything is really beyond the pale. Because what she was saying is that some Indigenous people are less deserving of our identity. To say it was, uh, uh, to say it was an insult is an un understatement. Linda Burney, the Minister for Indigenous Australians. Does she have a point, Paulina, or was it just a slip of the tongue from you? No, she doesn't, because, you know what, I put up a private member's bill on the floor of Parliament to actually address um, fraud identity with people claiming to be Aboriginals and getting millions of dollars in, in payments of taxpayers' dollars. And the whole fact is, you know, guess what? They stopped me from introducing it on the floor of Parliament. They know this goes on. There's been court cases over it. There was a Sri, Sri Lankan who claimed it, APO, his name is, A-double-P-O. He actually got it. And for about 100 members of his family, cost the taxpayers millions of dollars. Guess what? They don't want to address it. They're not acknowledging that, that it doesn't happen. And this true black, you know, she came to see me after I was elected in 2016. She said, and she lives up in the Cape. And she said, Pauline, we don't get any land. The native total land is taken over, controlled by the, Paul, by the councils, land councils. Pa Pauline. And she said, we want land. We want to improve yep. our, li our lives. Pauline, uh, I'm not going to go all ABC on you and pretend this is not an issue. We understand that the idea of people identifying as Aboriginal and being 
forthright about their, their, their real background is an important one, especially when there's economic and other advantages at play. But isn't it insulting to most Aboriginal people if you refer to some of them as true blacks? Well, they are true black, and I tell you what, I'm sick of these people getting out there and claiming Aboriginality. They look as, as white as what I do, and there's a smidgen of Aboriginality because there's no definition, true definition to Aboriginality. When the Attorney General in South Australia, when the Premier says, well, you can just sign a declaration and we'll accept that you're an Aboriginal. This needs to be addressed, Chris. It is a serious problem. And yep. even the Aboriginals themselves are sick and tired of seeing people claim Aboriginality when they're not. And the taxpayers have had a gut full of it. And you talk about disadvantage? Well, I'll tell you about a lot of people uh, throughout Queensland who are living in disadvantage in their cars and everything. And if you think I'm going to sit back and just ignore them because they're not classified as Aboriginal, that no. they need that special no, attention, I don't, it should I... be given on an individual needs basis. I don't think anybody is suggesting that we ignore anyone who's disadvantaged. Pauline, I appreciate you joining me. Thanks for the conversation. Pauline Hanson there, One Nation founder and leader. You knew we'd disagree and you got both sides of the argument in that little exchange. We'll come back to Pauline again next week, of course.